put zip ties and electrical tape, you can do anything. And, uh, we got it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ag With Emma. Today I've got a uh, corroboration, a mishmash, a big old mumbo jumbo of the rainy days that we've had since we got down here. So we got down here on the 20th of May, which was a Friday. We started cutting the next day, a Saturday. We cut part of Sunday, ran into wet wheat, and then we got rain. And then we cut for a couple more days after the rain dried, like after everything dried down. And then we got more rain. And then we've been rained out for a week. Today is the, it's the first Monday of June. I believe it's the sixth, I could be wrong. But we just got combines out of the field that we were, got rained out in last week. So last, it was the 31st of May that we got rained out and I'll have a bunch of videos, not a bunch, but like a sequence of events. I'll show you the field though really quick that we just pulled out of. I mean, you can kind of already see it, but there are still puddles, and uh, that's where the combines got out of. So, we're moving to our next field because we couldn't get out of the field. They think that the next field is going to hold them up. Hopefully, it's a little soft. And we got around six to, I think, six inches total between a couple storms, and it was just a whole mess. But. Hopefully we can cut at least a little patch today to move our stuff over there because this field is not drying out Like there's still a puddle sitting there, but hope you enjoy this mishmash probably very Random video of the things we've been trying to do on rain days We went to town a couple days like we spent a lot of money on things that we probably didn't need We've been sitting around the camper a lot. I only get phone service in my windowsill of my bedroom in the trailer. So I've been like cooped up in my bed like this. <laughs> Trying to edit and post YouTube videos. So if I ever have a gap in posting, it's probably because we've been sitting in the trailer because I would get crap for service in there. So with that, let's go follow the little mess of events that it has been since we got down here. Well, we made it. Everything's unloaded. Um, we're getting the header trailer ready to go right now, and we'll be ready to whip it in the morning. Right now, we're outside of at a cotton gym. They let us park equipment here so that we can just like keep it in the yard. There's other crews here. in the service truck, huh, Adam? It's not always gonna be this tight, I promise. I hope not. <laughs> Soil down here is like red, look at that. Pretty little weedies. I've never seen that, besides in like pictures. Okay, well, I've never dumped grain by myself, and Adam was gone, and uh, So today is May 24th, I believe. We just took the tarp off of that trailer because it has a uh, missing piece. And that's not very ideal. So we're taking this tarp out of the poles. We're gonna add another tarp into the poles that is whole. <laughs> Well, I'm glad Sam knew how to do that. Did you know how to do that? We could have figured it out, but now we're sitting on it waiting for Adam because Adam's gone. Well, Is this your introduction? No, it's rainy day things. They look so happy to be here. The sun is shining for the first time in like three days. We're looking at some new Hedas. Got anything to say about them? Uh, we're too broke for this. 
what you're gonna pour it in. <laughs> Another thing we're doing since we are rained out is changing the sieve on the combine. He's he's waiting to see if the service truck gets stuck. But um, Adam said it's just like bent up, doesn't work right, so we got to change it. Something the dealership skipped over, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh -oh. You're doing great. Well, I forgot to film all of that, but how does she do? I think that's in good. I was putting hydraulic fluid in the combine. Um. I need to start recruiting my crew members to record things when I'm not around. But there's the old sieve. And it just like wouldn't open. It was just kind of foobard. Yeah. I'll get one of you two to curl up in there together and make sure you don't bend it. Good. What day is it? The 27th, is it the 28th? It's the 28th, it's a Saturday, and we're waiting in the pickup. Got some snacks going on because the wheat is too wet to cut right now. <laughs> Please don't mind the mud on my windshield. Um, it's just mud. Tractors clean off. Well, we're all just sitting here while the trailer shakes. Just one time I went to band camp. <laughs> So something they don't tell you about Harvest Crew is that you're gonna have to go through a uh, tornado warnings. Smile for the YouTube. We're sitting in a car wash right now. It's a uh, May 31st. Cause it's very uncomfortable to be sitting in a camper that's rocking back and forth and uh, leaking rain everywhere. So we came to a car wash. Just all part of the experience. So like I said, on rainy days, we fix things. And today, it's the wiring on a trailer. Some of the lights don't work, I guess, right? Pardon? The lights on the trailer are screwed? Yeah, they're McMangled. Uh, McMangled. So we ain't no electricians, and it's starting to show, but. With zip ties and electrical tape, you can do anything. There's the issue. It's all dirty. Is our record keeping system to put all those back on the new one. See, it's all clean. This is dirty. We're gonna show you what we do when we need to check the moisture of the wheat and see if it is ready for us to roll our combines in just to even get a test cut of it. So we're gonna walk out in the field, show you some good looking wheat, hopefully. <laughs> it is a little windy. But it's drying the weed out. We've been rained out. What is today? Adam, what's today? Sunday, the June... June 10th? It's the first Sunday in June. That's your timestamp. And we're walking out in the field. It's been raining for too much. So normally, we like to walk out in a field... And not... <laughs> not pick up mud but that's our uh, that's a different issue um, since it rained it does affect the moisture of the wheat the rain when it's slow especially gets into little kernels so so you can kind of see these here I mean I don't have anything to compare it to but they look a little larger than they normally would if they were completely dry a little more plump I almost say a little bit shiny when you chew on it, they 
don't crack and break in half they more compress and get stuck in your teeth so that's a pretty good indication i bet you it's probably 16 and a half or 17 maybe so um we're normally looking for 13 and a half is what the elevator accepts for dryness and you can test that with your combine when you pull it through here but right now we can't even get a combine in here it would get stuck and then it'd spin out and then we'd have a whole nother issue on our hands and it breaks things when you're not careful with your machinery so it does suck to wait around while it dries out but hopefully with the wind and how hot it's supposed to get nowhere in the 100s this week i don't think but hopefully this will be dry enough that we can cut it and move on to our next stop so you basically just you know you pick one and this is pretty low yielding wheat this year but you pick one you grind it up like that hold on do it again for the camera i don't know <laughs> it's not a real scientific process but it'll give you an idea so all of the seed the wheat is protected in these little you know Wheat head with the awns. Are they called awns? Oh, beards, awns. Beards, awns, whatever you want to call it. And then this is what you pop in your mouth. And it just squishes. It Normally it's supposed to like hurt your teeth. Crunch right? or crack or snap. And that'll give you a pretty good idea. <laughs> you can tell kind of by looking at it that they're plump and shiny. Yeah when it rains and the humidity is high yep. it is a very finicky pain in the butt but with the weather down here you could stay take a test sample at oh, 10 30 in the morning it could be 16 percent and then you know by noon it could be down to 13 again it'll drop moisture that quick and then when the dew comes on it again at night it could shoot right back up to 16 percent so it's a waiting and a numbers game it uh, sucks but it does suck a lot. We've been sitting for how long now? Four days, five days. Four days, and there's still mud on my boots. It, it just makes me sad. Because all we do is spend money and like sit in the camper. <laughs> like we fix what we need to, but other than that, it's just too wet. So that's all there is to it. Farmers just pop it in their mouth. They're like, well, it's not dissolving on my tongue. So we're just gonna bring our combines in here. No science involved, basically. I mean, there's lots of science involved, but it's, it's not complicated. So, anybody can test some wheat moisture. You can try. And if you haven't yet, now you know. Don't worry, the <laughs> elevator will let you know if you're wrong. Yes. They will not be impressed. Oh, that's another thing we can talk about. So, if you bring high moisture wheat into the elevator, they dock you for it. So, you don't get as much money, right? So, you put it at the bottom of the hoppers yes. and then put dry wheat on top and hopefully they don't find it. Hopefully it makes us. Or you send them four loads to 17% then they hate you. I or would that. recommend it. But. but also can't you get docked if you have wheat that's too dry? Yes, they've got a whole entire and grading scale. If it's if it's too dry, you lose weight um, and you have less bushels, right? Because water makes up weight. So the accepted, the accepted moisture is 13 and a half. So anything over 13 and a half, the elevator's paying for extra water that is no weight in the grain. And anything under that, you're technically as a farmer are losing money because you're sending in less bushels. I should go to the elevator and get a video there too. Maybe that'll be later in the season, but now you know, moisture is important. I failed to get everyone updated, but um, we got it out. Anyways. So that is all we have for you for this video. Hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy and want to see more harvest content, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment about where your wheat's at right now if you grow wheat. So if you're still not in the harvest process or if you, I don't know, just planted it, let me know where your wheat's at. So thanks for watching. Adios. As always, hasta la pasta.